Algebra 1, 13.2c, we're doing word problems involving quadratic equations. Now, if you haven't seen these previous videos, you need to know how to do these before we can continue on, or you're going to get lost or confused. So there's a bunch of different videos that we did before this one. We're at 13.2c, so these are all the ones from the beginning of the chapter about quadratic equations, and they're one click away. Just go to this description, and you can click on the link and go right to them, all right? So you need to know about quadratic equations and squares of binomials, and if the equation is set just as an ax squared equals k, if there's no plus c, okay? So you need to know how to do that, all right, before we continue. The other thing I want to show you is we're going to be talking about projectiles. Those are objects that are thrown through the air. We're going to be talking about initial velocity. So let me show you this. It depends on who your teacher is and how they pronounce it or what your preference is. But when you see a V with a little zero down here, this is called a subscript. When you see a little number down here, it could be a V with a little one. It could be an A with a little one or an X with a little one. But this V with the little zero means the initial velocity. It's the initial speed when it's starting. You can read it either as a V sub zero, because it's a subscript. You could read it as V zero. You could read it as V naught. Naught is a very old-fashioned way of saying nothing or zero. Some even say V null, okay? So it depends on your preference. I usually either say V naught or V zero, okay? So we've got this projectile, this object that's moving through the air, and it's only under the influence of gravity. So, the approximate height, h, in meters of this projectile at t seconds, whatever the amount of seconds are, after it begins its flight from the ground, with an initial upward velocity, a starting upward speed of v0, is given by this formula. h equals negative 5t squared plus v0 times t. We can find the projectile when the projectile is at ground level if h is set to equal 0 like this, and we solve it this way. But if the projectile begins its flight at a certain height, c, we add a plus c back here on the equation for its approximate height at time t. So let's say you're on a balcony, or you're not laying on the ground throwing it. You're standing up, and you're six feet tall. Well, then we need to add this because you're six feet up when you start throwing it, see? It's a big difference between being on the ground zero and being six feet tall and throwing something, you're higher up, right? Okay, so Emma tosses a ball upward with an initial velocity v0 of four meters per second. And write that as m forward slash s meters per second from a height of one meter. Emma's short, she's only a meter tall. So how, how long will the ball be in the air? So here's our formula. We're going to set it to zero, okay? And we're going to plug in all the values. So we got four for our v0. So we put a four here instead. We've got one meter off the ground, because that's how tall she is, so that we put the one for c. And we're going to distribute this negative, okay? So we're going to go boom, boom, boom. And we're going to factor this as 5t plus 1 and t minus 1, see this? And we're going to use that zero factor property and split these up to equal zero so that we can find the solutions. So we set 5t plus 1 equals zero and t minus 1 equals zero, see? And we can take away 1 from each side to isolate this t, right? And then divide each side by the coefficient 5. So we get negative 1 fifth. Well, time cannot be a negative, so that's not going to work. It can't be negative one-fifth. On this side, we add one to each side to isolate the t, and we get a one. So, yeah, since time can't be a negative, the ball will be in the air for about one second. So when she throws it from a meter high, it's only going to be in the air for about one second. See? Okay? So this one's a little more involved. Money in a savings account will earn an annual interest at the end of the year. And after the second year, it's going to earn interest on the original amount and the interest from the first year. 
This is called compounding interest annually. So here's an example. I made a little table. If we deposit money January of 2016, $100 in the bank, what's going to happen is at the end of the year in December of 2016, if it's 5% interest, that's kind of a high interest rate for a savings account, but 100 and 5 are easy to multiply. So you would get $5 in December, and it would add to your, your balance. So you'd have $105. Well, at the end of this year, December of 2017, they would add another 5% interest, but now because the starting amount is $105, the interest is $5.25. Then in another year, December of 2018, with another 5% interest added, now it's going to be added to $110.25, that amount after 2017, see? And now you've got this amount. So each year, the interest is going to get bigger because the balance is growing from the previous year's interest. See that? I know this can be confusing, all right? But I wanted to show you that so that you'd kind of understand what's going on here. So an amount of money P, that's the principal, that $100 is the principal. It's the initial amount, okay? And then for this year, that's the principal. And for this year, that's the principal. See? So the amount of money P, the principal, is deposited in an annual interest rate R, at an annual interest rate R, and compounded for T years. You see our little T is right here in the formula. And it's going to grow to the amount A. So here's our principal, and it's multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate R and to an exponent of the amount of years. See? Now, if $256 is deposited at some interest rate, we don't know what it is, R, and it's compounded annually in two years, so see how our time was going to be a little exponent here, so that's our two, it grows to $289, so that's going to be our A. What was the interest rate, R? Ah, so we plug our values into this formula, all right? We've got our red 289, we've got our green 256 for P, we don't know what the R is, but we know the years are 2, so we've got our little 2 there. And we need to isolate this R. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide each side by this 256 and make our buddy the 1. Now our equation looks like this. Now we have a fraction on this side, and this is squared, isn't it? So we're going to flip the square of this side of the equation by putting a radical sign around these guys and removing that little 2 exponent from this side. We still need to isolate the R, don't we? So from this, we do this. We subtract 1 from each side of the equation, and now our new equation is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 289 divided by 256 is equal to R, and R is all by itself. Well, 17 times 17 is 289, and 16 times 16 is 256. We only need one of these, right? So we end up with negative 1 plus or minus 17 over 16. Well, that's just 1 and 1 16th, isn't it? That's going to be our interest rate. So negative 1 plus or minus. So if we do plus, this negative 1 is going to make a zero pair with this positive 1, and we're going to end up with 1 16th. If we do minus, then negative 1 minus 1 and 1 16th is a negative 2 and 1 16th, and you can't have a negative interest rate, so this cannot be the answer. It's got to be this one. You remember back in 5th and 6th grade, we changed fractions to decimals to percentages? So 1 16th is 0 0.0625, or 6.25% as an interest rate. So now we know what our interest rate is, and to check this out, we had an initial value of 256, didn't we? If we multiply it by 6.25% interest rate, that's $16 for the first year's interest. If we add this $16 to that 256, we get 272. Now for the next year, this 272 is going to get interest of 6.25%. We multiply that, we get $17. So the second year's interest is more than the first year's interest because we added that interest to that first amount, see? When we take the 272 and add that second year's interest to it, we get 289, and that's perfect. That's what that was, see? Just take it in nice, easy little steps 
okay? Remember that an interest rate or time cannot be negative, okay? So it would have to be the positive one. Our next video is going to be 13.3a, and we're going to talk about completing the square. That's a very big deal in quadratic equations, okay? So I hope this was helpful. We're almost done with Algebra 1. Keep trying. You're going to make it. You're going to be fine, okay? Bye.